deadline for the realization of your project? No deadline, but we're moving speedily towards it. What if you get CRSA? I don't care. In the past, you have asked your friends not to, I think, purchase mine by your last person. Yes. Why is it? You seem to have toned down a bit on that. Yeah. Because they have changed as well. So people are saying that federalism is not working for Nigeria. How do you think that the new federal government? Confederation. Every ethnicity will have the right to control their resources and to govern themselves. There will be no interference from Enugu whatsoever. How do you react to the U.S. ambassador's prediction that Biafra is a failed project or Biafra, Biafra project is failed? They said something about the state of Israel in 1948 and it came into existence. It will come. There's nothing man can do to stop it. So in this new Biafra, it, it gets actualized eventually. Would you contest for political positions? No. Why not? My job is to restore Biafra, not to serve it in any political capacity. How do you react to Ohane Zengi both his own name of you as well as that of Abra? I'm not sure they disown me. We disagreed, but the media would like to hype it up because they want to magnify the differences that we have. It's just mere emphasis, divergent views and emphasis. Basically, that's what I raised to. We are Republicans by nature, so people are entitled to their views. I may not welcome it, but I defend their right to hold it all the time. It wasn't directed at us, so I couldn't possibly react to it because it was not directed at us. But I, I think it goes to show that they're in tune with the prevailing trend, which is referendum. At least so we welcome the fact that some of them are Democrats. Yeah, I don't understand how it wasn't directed. You, you are the leader of Biafra. It was, yeah. it was in the North North part. So they are part of Biafra. They've been, your, your landlord said you should go. Then what do you expect to do? Exactly. Your landlord said you should go. Then try and go. If you said they will kill you, they've been doing it since 1945. They kill all the time, so it's nothing new to us. It was, it was reported that you had said uh, no elections in Alabama. Do you think that can be possible without that bloodshed? How can you be bloodshedding when you're in your house sitting down and enjoying the fence cellar on the 18th of November 2017? How is that bloodshed? When you say uh, no elections, mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. How do you intend to make this happen? Are you, are you going to declare that the Afghan sit at home on election day? Yes. Yes. There will be no movement. No cats, no dogs outside, no chicken, nothing. Okay. So Complete silence. Everyone. What did you do? Say that you're a hypocrite. Why? That, um, you have a British passport, mm -hmm. and yet you have asked the Afghan to destroy the Afghan in certain ways. What are your reactions? I never give such a directive. You're asking me a direct question. I, and I speak truthfully and directly. I did not give such an order. If people want to destroy whatever documents or papers they have on them, it doesn't tell you up to them. Okay. And I'm not a hypocrite either. Because I was... My land was forcibly taken over by external forces. And I'm being forced to live under it. It's my job to fight to get myself out of it. Now I'm the I had the British traveling documents before they still fought for independence and got it. Same thing applied to George Washington in America. He was a British colony settler, traveled about as a British citizen before he got USA out of the mess that was colonial rule from England. Same thing in India. There's nothing new. I've been now uh, in the public limelight for close to four years, so people know what I can do and what I cannot do. If people wish to delude themselves with false propaganda information about me, they're more than entitled to it. I cannot stop them from doing so. But what I say to them is that those people who are feeding you this junk information about me, they do not wish you well. People like us, IPOB, are the only ones that can save you from your chronic poverty, from your diseased state of mind, from your horrible bad roads, from your non-existent hospitals, from your absence of infrastructure and we're the only ones who can make it possible to, for you to get a job that's how it is all those people telling you all those nonsense about Namde Kanu is because they know that Namde Kanu is capable of articulating a policy or a viewpoint that can get you out of the mess that you're in so they want you to remain poor to remain blind for your parents to be dying 
it it benefits them. So um, basically, you be granted bail conditions. Yes. And um, the Nigerian government and a lot of public opinion analysts mm -hmm. seem to think that they're breaching the bail conditions. Where were those people when Buhari refused to obey court order upon court order upon court order? Why didn't anybody go to Daura or go to Asarok to ask Buhari why he'd failed to obey court orders to set me free to release Dasuki and to release Zagzagzagi? Why have they not obeyed the court order to release Bright Chimeze Ishiwa as pronounced by a competent court of law in Uyo? Why don't you concern yourself with the gross abuse of human rights being perpetrated on a daily basis by DSS, by the police, and by the army. Why are you not trying as hard as possible to uncover the mass grave that they have in army barracks in Onitsha? Why have you not questioned them about the amnesty report and about the slaughter and the butchering of our people? Why are you people so hell-bent on things that don't matter? Whereas you should be concerning yourself with things that actually matter. Have you asked them why you have no light? Why you must run a generator? Have you asked them why they import refined fuel when you have four modern refineries, and you have abundance of crude oil. Have you asked them any of those questions? Why don't you have good roads? You have aggregates, you have stones, you have bitumen coming from the ground. Why do you have bad roads? And you have unemployed graduates of structural or should I say civil engineering. Why are you not asking them all those questions? Because they understand that the they can't mean well for the masses, for the people, the downtrodden, people who are suffering because of poverty. They turn your mind around because they know you are not disciplined enough to understand that you need to stand your ground to demand for what is yours. That is why it is very easy to twist the mind of a black person. Che Guevara came to Congo to fight. Many, many years ago, over 50 years ago, why did he leave? Because he said, a black African man cannot be disciplined enough to put the need of his self-preservation and survival over the need of the stomach. How can they perform when there is no Southeast leader who is responsible for the maintenance of the Enugu Iwacha, which is Port Harcourt Expressway? How can I hold any governor responsible when all these so called federal roads are denied any form of attention or maintenance? How can I? Because it, is not, it's, it, it belongs to what they call the exclusive list. So now tell me, how can I hold them responsible for that? Are they meant to build Second Niger Bridge? Is it their business to build a Second Niger Bridge? Is it their business to compel the Africa Development Bank to provide underwriting loans to people who want to borrow money to build factories and industries? Is it their fault as well? But who builds the roads in the north? From the same oil money coming from Okwa. From the same proceeds from gas fields in Ohaji, in Ebema. And you're telling me you're in one Nigeria, one viable, unity-driven country. Is a charade, is fake, is a lie, and I'm sure you know it. So, um, I was going to Twitter, and um, there's this tweet you know, trending about yes. a certain Ikita Chidika. Yes. Who drove you home yes. from prison. Mm -hmm. And now he's declared that he's going to campaign for elections in Ananda. Yes. And then now you are home again to say no elections in Ananda. Yes. There is no irony because I'm a very consistent person. I do not change. People can change as their business. I don't change. I'm a number can. I don't change. I don't change. You don't think this is some kind of betrayal? That Sita Chidoka drove me from prison. Is you want me to walk from prison from Kujia to Abuja? So people felt that um, he was lending you a helping hand. He was supporting you when you were in prison. He was not supporting me. He was concerned about my plight as any other sensible human being ought to be. That's what he was trying to do. Being reasonable. And that's what he did. I would do the same thing. I got, the fact that I got lawyers for suspected Boko Haram inmates at DSS, does that mean I'm a Boko Haram supporter, sympathizer? The fact that I brought friends of ours that people detained at DSS illegally for nearly four years, does that mean I support Boko Haram? Does that mean I support Boko Haram? Exactly. So why should Otita Chidoka giving me a lift from prison represent anything extraordinary?
Because they know that's what will appeal to you. I said it earlier, your primordial instinct of debasing yourself to your jealousy, basically. People who try to be like me cannot be like me, so they resort to very cheap slander and blackmail. But I welcome it. It makes me become a better. I work twice harder than I should. So the more these battles come, the better for me. They know they're misguided. They know they're lying. They know what they're saying is false, but they say it because they're hoping to tap into the reservoir you have of greed, envy, and jealousy. Maybe if you cannot defeat them, they can in a recent debate. Why don't we try greed and jealousy? Look at him. He's only he's him. Why not somebody else? You can't be me because you can never be me. You've gotten the question wrong, in my view, because there can never be an end to Biafra. Biafra will come. It doesn't matter what man does. It will come. So no one can there, stop it. There is, there, there is an Igbo president tomorrow. If you like, let my wife be the first woman U.S. president. It won't stop me. It's very interesting how you get um, news uh, that you consider to be newsworthy or the wrong type of news and not the positive one. Myself came here we, along with 15 other groups and made me the overall leader of the Afro. I'm sure you're aware of that. Try and report that more often. We're not fighting each other. We know where we're going. We're going to get the Afro. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Absolutely nothing. 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 I need them to understand this. We've crossed the Rubicon, the point of no return. There is nothing anybody can do. If I'm alive, if I'm dead, if I'm wherever I may be, Biafra will come. If I'm dead, it's even better because it will come far more quicker. I can assure you. If Biafra is fighting for you, no one will touch your property. If you're fighting alone, you're bound to lose it. So Biafra is the best. We will become the 16th member country of ECOWAS. If Nigeria doesn't release those properties, then we'll take them to court and we'll get them back. Even twice the value. The Jews had investments all over the world. Most of the priceless artifacts and paintings belonged to many families in Germany. It was stolen by the Nazi party. Do you know that? Eventually they got everything back with compensation on top of it. That's what we're going to do. If you touch our investments, we'll come back for you. And we know where we can get it from. So there is nothing for anyone to worry about. It's the only, if you are not stopping you from being a Nigerian, if you, if you are born on the streets of Lagos and you want to be a Lagosian and your, your name is Adama. Oh, well and good. There's no problem. He born or they leave? He born or they leave? Are you begging? <laughs> we are begging. So you but mean... Begging is too late. See, with that Igbo... No, see. <laughs> with that Igbo... Igbo. <laughs> sir, sir. I'm standing in the person of Buhari right now. Yes. Making a plea. Uh -huh. That people are not living. But want to go. We did not sign a divorce certificate. So you are begging people. now. Okay. We are begging you guys. Are <laughs> you are not living <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> you are not living to any year. Are you are not living. What are your reasons? Are what, what are your reasons? The reason is that Igbo <laughs> is important to Nigeria. Okay. Just the way Aosa is important to Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. Just the way Yoruba is important. Just yes. the way Urobo is important. <laughs> yes. Guys, uh, Igbo is and Igbo is much more important. Much more. But we have been much more. But we have been. But we have been. We have been yeah. Talking, much more important. In what areas? But we have been telling Nigerians. In what areas? In what no, areas? See, in the areas of love. Eh? Okay. In the areas of love, Igbos have shown Nigeria the kind of love that even the Eurobirds who are claiming to own Nigeria, they cannot show Nigeria. Let's make, let me make an example in the person of Ina Diaziki Way. Okay. Ina Diaziki Way, they were the people who instituted the constitution that Nigeria is using today. Ina Diaziki Way said that no day shall nobody rise up to say that he's going to break away from Nigeria. Because, why did he say that? He said because he believed in the unity of Nigeria. All right. That was why I said it. Not because he believed that one part will contribute to Igbo. No! Igbo is contributing much more to Nigeria than any part. Forgetting my part that half oh yeah, not be oh yeah. Business is much business without without oh yeah, business without a business, oh yeah, not go flow. Correct. 
If you not get people when they get this technical the technocrat in managing business, you all yourself, eh? You go drink them. You they hear me? So in Nigeria, Ziki way, who was the first ceremonial president in Nigeria? The fact that if we Obama to be the first president in Nigeria, it's enough reason for us to know that Igbo is far important to Nigeria than any other tribe. Confirm. Yeah, Confirm. I'm telling you, Igbo is far more important Confirm. to Nigeria Confirm. than any other Confirm. ethnic. ethnic they are communicating. Ah, but if I, if I should ask you, ah. please, uh, if I should ask you, ah. what about the area of uh, feeding? The area of Do you think that Igbos can cope without ourselves, which claims? They are the feed nation. Yeah, they, feed, they, feed, they, they are the feed nation of no, the, the confederation. They can cope. They can huh? cope. But what I what I'm trying to say is that eh, let's make love reign. Okay. The Igbos, they are people who believe in Christ. Then who are not, who are you now advising on? No, I'm 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 pleading. I'm begging. No, no, no. no. I'm not advising. No, no. The last your last word. Was a kind of you know an, a word of an advice. No, no, no. No, it's, it's a, not advice. Okay, I'm okay, not advising. Okay. You, are, you are pleading. I'm pleading. I'm pleading. Yeah. I'm pleading. Yeah. That the Igbos should not leave Nigeria. We want a unity in that country. But America today but for has the, a population of over three hundred million. My brother, my brother, but they are still together. my brother, please. Eh, let me tell together. you. Let me tell you. Even though people are raising that they want to go. They say they want to go. California, California said they want to go. Right. But they are still remaining. Brother, brother, from, from people saying, eh, they said the Igbos are their minorities. No, no. And no, 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 no. Without no, no, Igbos, no, Nigeria no. can live. Igbos are not minority in Nigeria. Whosoever said that word, God mm. damn that person. They are not they are not no, people. God damn that person. Igbos are not no, minority. No. How can you say Igbos are minority in Nigeria? The first ceremonial president in Nigeria was Ibo Man. The people who fought for the Nigeria independence. Ever since then, after in the Nigeria, the Ibos, uh, what uh, are Joining us now, two veterans of the Biafra War who fought on opposing sides. Igwe Christopher Ejiofor was aide-de-camp for the head of the Republic of Biafra. And Chief Olusegun Obasanjo is the former president of Nigeria. He ended the Biafra War as a colonel in the Nigerian army. Gentlemen, it's good to have you here. Chief, I, I, I'm looking at some pictures that your presidential library sent to us here at the stream. There's one of you wading through the swamp, and this is the, the last two years of the end of the Nigerian Civil War. There's another one of you commanding your men at an airport, at a runway, and then finally signing the documents to release Biafran soldiers who are prisoners of war. What are the memories that stay with you? What do you remember 50 years on, Chief? What I remember is the pain of the war on both sides, the loss on both sides, and the fact that came to us all vividly that the futility of the war, what we achieved at the end of the war could have been achieved without one bullet being fired. Mm. But during the war, we destroyed all the infrastructure that mattered to us. The refinery we had was destroyed. The bridge that connected the east with the west was destroyed. We lost thousands, thousands of people on both sides. I believe what caught me vividly is the anguish which we could have saved ourselves from mm. by not fighting the war. Igwe, let me share this with you. This is from Ahmed Kasim. He says, very, very sad. Brother killing fellow brother. As for me, I lost loved ones from both sides as a child then. You, you were pretty young at the time of the Biafra war. The searing memory for you is what? What would you want to share with the world? 
I first joined the Nigerian Army in 1960 in the military school at Zaria, and we were taught to become one Nigeria. I came back from the United Kingdom in 1965 and was teaching in Lagos and the military cantonment in Apapa. But the greatest shock of my life for that war was the fact that a coup d'etat happened in January 1966, which was carried out by a large number of Nigerian army officers from all parts of Nigeria, north, east, west, and south. And their intention was not uh, tribalistic in any shape or form. In fact, their main motive at the time was to change the political structure of Nigeria and release Obafemi Awolowo. But at the end of the day, history has it on books that it was an evil coup, which totally put a wrong slant on the whole issue. And I had, we had to be killed. We were killed. Uh, in, uh, where our lives were threatened. I had to escape with my life from Lagos to Biafra, which was not Biafra at the time. Mm. And for me, the pains are so that that war should never have happened, as the chief just said now, because Rhodesia declared unilateral independence in 1965, and Britain never lifted a finger. Not a, a, a British soldier went over to fight Ian Smith. And, and this was a total rebellion against the Queen. Sure. Yet, Biafra, after one month of declaration of independence, a war was unleashed on us, which was, in a way, pogrom, because we had no defense, we had nothing. Sure. And, and our people had been massacred from the north in, in January. Sorry. Ikwe, you, you, I mean, you bring up an important point. It's an important point that a lot of Nigerians in our online community are talking about, which is history. Who is telling the history? How's the history being told of the Nigerian civil war? Yusuf here says, unfortunately, because the war was described as no winner, no vanquished, little history was taught on it. Chief Obasanjo, why do you think the history is kind of very, very light, still contested about what happened 50 years ago in Nigeria? Well, history is, uh, first of all, you tell it from your point of view. What Igwe has said now, uh, for instance, is the history of the Nigerian civil war from his own point of view. Uh, somebody else will look at that unfortunate civil war beginning from the coup of uh, uh, January 1960. Before that coup, he said he was in the army, I was in the army. We knew no difference between one tribe or the other. But Chief, this, is the, this is the point. That young, but Chief, if I may, young people are saying, we are not reading about this in Nigeria. We are not seeing this history. Why is this history not being told? Why do they feel they're not being told the history? Why do you think? Well, why, it, 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 now, I believe that we haven't got the history written from the perspective of an objective historian. Ah. Um, I wrote a book on the Civil War. I wrote it from my own point of view. I call it my command. Mm -hmm. It was my command of the war uh, from my point of view. Now, other people have written uh, five uh, majors or four majors, they wrote it from their own point of view. And the story that, uh, what uh, the Igwe has said. Now, another person will say, look, sure. that uh, the coup was whatever may be the uh, objective or the uh, intention, the uh, uh, operation of it or the execution of it was one-sided. Mm. Now, let me give you figures on, from the North. At least four very senior military officers were killed. Mai Malare, uh, Abu Gulajima, uh, Kru Mohammed, Chief. and James Parham. Chief, what, what I'm, now, uh, Chief uh, the point that you're making, and I, I answered it very acutely, and I apologize for, for pushing you just a little bit for time, is that depending on what side you fought, you have a different story to tell. We appreciate you telling your story on our program today. And also, Igwe, we appreciate you being on this program as well. Thank you so much. We will continue this discussion with the rest of our guests and in another edition of The Stream coming up 
on the next episode. So, Chief Abasanjo and Igwe Ejiofor, thank you for being part of this program. <music>
why do you think the history is kind of very, very light, still contested, about what happened 50 years ago in Nigeria? Well, history is, uh, first of all, you tell it from your point of view. What Igwe has said now, uh, for instance, is the history of the Nigerian Civil War from his own point of view. Uh, somebody else will look at that unfortunate civil war beginning from the coup of uh, uh, January 1960. Before that coup, he said he was in the army, I was in the army. We knew no difference between one tribe or the other. But Chief, this, is the, instance, this is the point that young, death. but Chief, if I may, young people are saying, we are not reading about this in Nigeria. We are not seeing this history. Why is this history not being told? Why do they feel they're not being told the history? What do you think? Well, well it, 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 now, I believe that we haven't got the history written from the perspective of an objective historian. Ah. Um, I wrote a book on the Civil War. I wrote it from my own point of view. I call it my command. Mm -hmm. It was my command of the war uh, from my point of view. Now, other people have written um, five uh, majors or four majors. They wrote it from their own point of view. And the story that uh, what uh, the Igwe has said. Now, another person will say, look, sure. that uh, the coup was whatever may be the uh, objective or the uh, intention, the uh, uh, operation of it or the execution of it was one-sided. Mm. Now, let me give you figures. On, from the North, at least four very senior military officers were killed. Mai Malare, uh, Abu Gulajima, uh, Kru Mohammed. Chief? And James Brown. Chief, what, what I'm, now, uh, Chief, uh, the point that you're making, and I, I understand it very acutely, and I apologize for, for pushing you just a little bit for time, is that depending on what side you fought, you have a different story to tell. We appreciate you telling your story on our program today. And also, Igwe, we appreciate you being on this program as well. Thank you so much. We will continue this discussion with the rest of our guests and in another edition of the stream coming up on the next episode. So, Chief Abasanjo and Igwe Ejiofor, thank you for being part of this program.